Hello class, welcome to module 2. So in this module, we're going to talk about the different mode of acquisition for the property plant and equipment. Our learning objective for this module is uh, the same from the previous module, is to account for the initial recognition of property plant and equipment. This time, we're, but this time we're going to talk about uh, the different ways to acquire the asset or the property plant and equipment. So what are the different mode of acquisition that are present for property plant equipment? So the company or the business can acquire uh, asset, a long-term assets by using cash acquisition or cash purchases, uh, including a lump sum or a basket price acquisition. Uh, we're going to talk about that later. So another one, another mode of acquisition for property plan equipment is uh, by deferred payment of uh, purchases or purchase price. Actually, we discussed this already uh, with cash discounts, taken or not taken. Uh, but we're going to talk about again, uh, but in addition to uh, with cash discount scenarios, we're going to talk about also uh, how about if you acquire a long-term assets, you acquire long-term assets at or using an installment plan or a long-term contract for example you issue long-term notes or bonds for example or if instead of paying cash or issuing a liability securities you issue equity securities so instead of cash you issue stocks so the seller of the assets uh, will become or will become uh, one of our stockholders shareholders how about if you acquire assets by means of donation? So donors can be an existing shareholders or a philanthropist, meaning they are not owners, so just, they just want to donate something to the corporation. And how to acquire, how to account for assets? Uh, by self-construction. So you are the one who construct your own asset. So how to account for that one? Or acquisition under lease contracts. So you are the uh, lessee in this case. And lastly, how about if the company is involved in exchange of non-monetary assets. So the non-monetary assets here is the long-term assets or the PPE. Now let's talk about uh, cash purchases. So cash purchases meaning you acquire assets by means of uh, paying cash. So paying cash... Uh, Yun, paying cash. Yan. Kaya lang, sometimes, or most of the time, so you acquire asset uh, lump sum. So meaning you acquire, uh, or the transaction between the buyer and the seller involves several assets. And the group of assets is acquired at a lump sum price. So meaning one price for different type of assets. Or that's what we call basket price. So meaning, uh, for example, so this is the basket. So you acquire all of the assets in, in the basket. For example, there are asset 1. So we have asset 2, asset 3. All of them are acquired for, uh, for example, 10,000. So the question is how to allocate this 10,000 between asset 1, asset 2, and asset 3. So according to our textbook or to the standard of the usual practice is that the lump sum price or the basket price which is the 10,000 so this is what we call the lump sum price so this is the lump sum price or the basket price will be allocated for asset 1, asset 2, asset 3 using the best uh, available indicator present and that is usually the fair values of the asset so meaning the fair value of asset 1 fair value of asset 2 and fair value of asset 3 ayan so However, so what are the possible indicator of your fair value? So we have three available. So the fair value can be the market price, can be the appraised values, or it can be the assessed value. So the assessed value will be coming from the government, particularly the BIR, for example. Or sometimes this is what we call the zonal value. So that is the value of the asset based on... Uh, Sometimes the area, so area it is located. So actually, that 
value is just used for taxation purposes. Appraised value meaning you use a professional service of professionals to assess the market value or fair value of the assets. For example, the real estate broker. So you engage the help of real estate estate appraiser, for example, sorry, not broker, real estate appraiser to determine the fair value of the assets. Or if there is readily available market for that uh, standard or for that particular assets, then you use that market value. What do you mean by that? For example, the you are selling, you are buying land, so and you determine the market value on that particular area. So, so you can refer to that one as the market value of the asset purchase. Ayan. And also, portion of lump sum price that is directly attributable to particular assets in the group is assigned in full to such an asset. Example, so you have three assets. So we have asset 1, asset 2, asset 3. Uh, remember, you need to determine the fair market value or fair value of asset 1, asset 2, asset 3. So, but you bought, the, bought them for 1 million, for example. But in order for you to determine the fair value of asset 1, so you pay or you engage the services of a professional. So, you are using the appraised value. And you pay 1,000, for example, for to appraise asset 1. You pay another 2,000 to appraise the fair value of asset 2 and you pay 3,000 peso or 3,000 peso to assess the fair value of asset 3. So definitely, uh, this 1,000 is attributable to asset 1, this 2,000 is attributable to asset 2, and this 3,000 is attributable to asset 3. So we don't need to allocate this 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000. So we just need to uh, charge the specific cost to the specific asset because they are uh, directly attributable. Yeah. So to understand further, so let's discuss a problem or let's solve a problem. So this is adapted from our te textbook. So this is problem 2-1, letter C. The coconut company paid 22 million to acquire land, building, and equipment. So as you can see, so this is the basket price, or this is the lump sum price. So for this 22 million, so the asset acquired are a group of assets. So we have land, building, and equipment for 22 million. Of course, we need to uh, allocate this 22 million to the different assets. Why? Look at the Assets. So, land is subject to appreciation and buildings and equipment are subject to depreciation. So, therefore, uh, we need to separate 22 million. So, a certain portion of 22 million is subject to appreciation and certain portion of this 22 million is subject to depreciation. So, we need to allocate. So, how are we going to allocate? So, using the fair value of the assets which can be market value, appraised value, or assessed value. So according to the problem, so at the time of acquisition, the company paid 150000 for an appraisal. So meaning, yung appraisal cost of 150000 cannot be directly attributable to land, building, and equipment. So what do you mean by that one? So mean, meaning, this 150000 should also allocated to land, building, and equipment. Ngayon, if, for example, out of 150, 50,000 is for the land, eh, hindi mo na kailangan allocate. No need to allocate for that one. Kasi, directly traceable naman siya sa land. Eh. But, but since this is not traceable, yung 150, so kagaya ng 22 million, we need to allocate using the uh, relative values approach. So, yung relative value, using per value to allocate. So, according to the problem, so, the professional identify the or appraise the assets as follows so for land the fair value is 10 million building is 12 million 500,000 and equipment is 2 million 500,000 so determine the cost of the assets so yun yung question one ko so how much is to allocate the 22 million lump sum price plus the appraised value of 150,000 why you need to allocate this 150 because it cannot be traced directly to land, building, and equipment. And you, you 
and this 150,000 is your cost to determine the value of the asset. So therefore, we need to allocate this 150 also. So the total cost to allocate is 22 million. This is 22 million 150,000. So question, paano allocate? So let's try to allocate this 22 million 150,000 on the next slide. Ayan. So, first, so how to allocate para malaman natin yung price to determine the price of the deed of the specific assets. So, we need to allocate. So, una gawa tayo ng uh, allocation uh, method. So, yung relative sales price method nga ang gagamitin natin. So, we have land. So, ito mga asset natin. Land, building, and equipment. Ayan. So, dito ko ilalagay yung fair value. So, ang fair value for this particular scenario is the appraised value. Ayan. So, for land, so according to the problem, so this is 10 million. 10 million. Building, this is 12 million. 500,000. Equipment, this is 2 million. 500,000. So, if we add these three, the total is 25 million. So, we're going to make a fraction, an allocation basis using the fair values. So, paano gagawin yun? So, this is 10 over 25. Bakit 10 over 25? 10 million divided by 25 million. Or, this one is 40%. So, 12 million 500,000 divided by uh, 25 million so, lalabas, this is 50%. And another one, 2.5 million divided by 25 million. So, this will give us 10%. So, question, how much to allocate? So, remember, sabi natin kalina, yung buong 22 million, 150,000. So, 22 million, 22 million, 150,000, this one. Multiply ko sa 40%, so times 0.40. So, lalabas for the land, the cost should be, or out of 22,150,000, the cost attributable to land is 8,860,000. So, 22,150,000 times ko ng 0.5. So, this one. So, for building, that will be 11,075,000. And lastly, 22,150,000 times 0.10. So, this will, for equipment, the allocated price will be 2,215,000. So, yan na. So, take note, itong 22,150,000 includes the appraised value. Ayan. So, yan. Question, paano siya i- Paano i-journalize? So, how to uh, journalize this transaction? So, wait lang. Just a few more. Okay, so let's journalize. Just a second. Okay, so what is what will be our journal entry? So, syempre, so our journal entry uh, just debit to land. Land, uh, the allocated price. So, 8,860,000 and debit to building, debit to building, this is 11,075,000, credit to equipment, this is for 2,215,000 and credit cash, this is for 22,150,000. Take note, the 22,150,000 includes also the appraisal cost. And by the way, so since uh, we allocated the cost to the different assets, so we can depreciate 
11,075,000 also equipment 2,350,000 so meaning these two are subject to depreciation but the 8,860,000 uh, is not subject to depreciation because that is for the land yeah. so that is the logic why we need to allocate the uh, assets or the lump sum price between the different assets uh, in that kind of acquisition Okay, so let's answer another problem. So I'm refer, please refer to problem two dash two. However, if you com if you want to compare that to the our textbook, so I I made some uh, changes in terms of the cost of the asset, and this is just to make the uh, allocation basis uh, in the whole percentage. Because if you use the original number, so there will be a decimal place, places no? uh, in the fractions. So I'm going to read. So a company acquired a tract of land in which was located an office building. So you bought a land with office building, warehouse, and manager's residence for a lump sum price of 49500 So this is a basket purchase. Of basket acquisition. The following data were taken relative to the assets of these assets. So we have the appraised value. So I told you before, so the basis should be the market value or the fair value. Sorry, if fair value is not given, so market value tayo. If market value is not provided also, so we can use the appraised value and the or assessed value and the uh, zonal, uh, sorry, not zonal. Uh, price value and the assessed value so for taxation purposes so since given naman na yan so 56 to 50 so in this type of problem just check if the total of this amount this 21 million 20 million 9 million so 4.5 million is equal to this 56 to 50 thousand so what is the relevance of this original cost of course this is not relevant because this is the original cost on the point of view of the seller but for us, the buyer, what is relevant is the uh, acquisition price or the lump sum price because that is the uh, what we give uh, in exchange for the asset acquired. Yeah. So, but take note also, so according to the problem also, shortly after acquisition, modifications were made on the office building at a cost of 1,200,000. So, Question, are you going to allocate this 1.2 million? Of course not, because this is directly traceable to the building. So no need to allocate. Not like from the previous uh, from the previous problem, the appraise, appraisal fee or what you have paid to the uh, professional to determine the fair value of the assets is directly attributable to the assets. Uh, acquired so therefore you need to allocate but this 1.2 million no need to allocate because according to the problem this is related to the office building Ayan. so let's allocate so just like before so i'm going to refer to the uh, fair value so we have four assets so we have land office building warehouse and managers residence so the fair value according to the problem is 21,937,500 this is 20,250,000 warehouse that's 9,562,500 and for the manager residence this is 4,500,000 so if we add all of this amount this will equal to 56,250,000 So, kapitin lang natin yung allocation met basis So, 21 million uh, 21 21,937,500 divided by 56,250,000 So, this is 39% 20,250,000 divided by 56,250 So, this is 36% Ayan So, 9,562,500 divided by 56,250 so this is 17% and lastly 4,500,000 divided by 56,250 this is 8% so magkaka magkani i-allocate yun lang 49,500,000 na lump sum price 
So, 49,500,000 times 39%. So, this is 19,305,000. 49,500,000 divided by, I multiply by 36%. So, this is 17,800,000. 20,000. 49,500,000 times 70%, that's 8,415,000. And lastly, 49,500,000 times 8%, so this is 39,600,000. So if you add this amount or this 19.3, 17.8, 8.4, 39.6, uh, the total should be 49,500,000. So, uh, but take note, the office building should be 17,820,000 plus yung directly attributable cost na 1,200,000. So, ang total cost ng building natin is 17,820,000 plus 1,200,000. So, dapat 19,020,000 yun. Ayan. So, that is the end of our, of my presentation. And we're going to discuss in a separate presentation the other mode of acquisition. In case you have questions, please let me know. And of course, our reference for this uh, discussion is our textbook, which is the Intermediate Accounting. Uh, series volume 2 2019 edition by our own Patricia uh, our own Dean Patricia Mempleo and Anita S. Robles. Thank you and God bless.